Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to teach you a method to effectively enhance the realism of characters and the texture of skin. Take a look at this picture. I generated this image using Quen Image. The images produced by Quen Image are aesthetically very pleasing. Overall, this picture looks beautiful. However, you can't zoom in to inspect it closely. If you do, you'll find all sorts of problems. For example, the details in the hair are missing, and so are the skin details. The whole picture has a blurry, hazy feel to it. So, while we can say this image is very pretty, it lacks realism. Now, let's look at the image after we've processed it. The overall lighting, shadows, and the character's realism are fully present. First, let's zoom in. Look at the hair. The sense of layering is very clear. Now, let's look at the skin, the texture, including the eyelashes, eyes, teeth, and even the texture on the lips and skin are all rendered exceptionally well. Let's look at another example. This is another image generated by Quen Image. When we zoom in, you'll see it's the same problem. Now, let's look at the image after our processing. Notice the details in the eyes, hair, eyebrows, skin, teeth, and the texture of the lips. They are all excellently rendered. So, this method of enhancing character realism and skin texture is very effective. So, how is this done? We used a model called SRPO, which comes from Tencent. You might wonder what it is. Essentially, it's just a fine-tuned version of the Flux model. The fine-tuning was based on a reinforcement learning from human feedback model. So, rather than calling SRPO a model, it's more accurate to call it a fine-tuning method. It can be used not only on Flux, but also on other models. If we open the model's file list, you'll see the model size is 47.6 gigabytes, which is very large. Additionally, in the Comfy Y folder, you can find the corresponding workflows. Therefore, to run the full model, the hardware requirements are quite high. Of course, there are other versions, like various quantized versions, but I must remind you, if you use these other versions, the quality might drop significantly, as we can see from the example images. So, if your hardware allows, I strongly recommend running the full model. I've also set up the workflow on Running Hub. You can access this platform through runninghub.ai. In the Comfy Y space, Running Hub is an excellent workbench because it keeps up with new technologies as soon as they emerge. You can use the invitation link in my video description to register for Running Hub, which will give you 1,000 free credits. Plus, you get 100 bonus points for logging in daily allowing you to try out your own workflows. Next, let's dive into the specific implementation of the SRPO workflow. As I mentioned, this model is a fine-tuned version of the Flux model. Therefore, its workflow is identical to Flux's. I haven't made any adjustments here. You can download the corresponding workflow from its Hugging Face page, and it will be the same as what I'm showing you now. The only difference is that to avoid writing prompts myself, I use the Prompt Reverse Engineering node during my tests. This allows us to get a corresponding prompt based on an image I provide. We can then connect this directly to the clip text encode node to make image generation simpler. All right, let's quickly go over the workflow. The model has three components. First is the main model, which is the SRPO model we've been talking about. Notice I've selected default for the weight type, meaning the full-sized model. If your hardware can't handle it and you have a 40 series GPU, you can choose one of the other options. If you have a 50 series GPU, you can select this one. Next are the encoders. Just like Flux, it uses a dual encoder setup, one T5 and one CLIPL. And then there's the V, which is the same one used with Flux. For the prompt section, I set the guidance to 3.5. This is an advanced sampler where I've specified a resolution of 1280 by 720, a typical 16 to 9 aspect ratio to generate our latent image. I've set the seed to random. For the sampler and scheduler, I'm using Euler with the normal scheduler though other options work well too. For the steps, you can use a slightly lower number. I'm using 50 steps to stay consistent with the official recommendation. This is a standard flux setup, so you can just use these settings. Let's see the prompt that was reverse engineered. It looks like this. If we connect it to our text encoders, we can generate the corresponding image. Let's look at the generated image. You'll notice it's not particularly beautiful, but it has sufficient detail. Whether it's the details on the chair, the crown, the woman's dress, or the necklace on her chest. All the various details are there. Some of you might wonder why it doesn't look clear. That's because, to a large extent, these details still exist as noise. For example, if we zoom in on the eyes, you can see a lot of noise. You might ask, how can I use an image with so much noise? But you need to understand that having noise in an image is actually a good thing. 
Noise means there is more detailed information present. You can then use further denoising techniques to improve the image quality. For instance, I've connected it to a Seed VR2 model, which you're all familiar with. Looking at the basic configuration, my new resolution is set to 1920. So the final output resolution is 3408 by 1920, which is quite large. Now if I zoom in, you'll see all the details are revealed. This is possible only because our original image contained enough noise information. Without that noise, you wouldn't be able to render these details so well. Of course, you can set a smaller resolution here, like 1080, which would result in a 1920 by 1080 image. This is the standard workflow we recommend for using SRPO. Let me try another one for you to see. The generated original image has the same issue. If we zoom in, the details are lacking, but there is noise in various areas. We can then upscale it using Seed VR 2. As you can see, the result is fantastic. So, does this method have any drawbacks? Yes, we can see one. While it eliminates the plastic look on the face and adds a lot of texture to make it look more natural, it doesn't fundamentally solve one of Flux's problems. The vertical line issue. Notice the vertical lines are still present, which doesn't create a very good overall impression. This is an area where this fine-tuned model could be further improved. Actually, I didn't just test these two images. I tested many. You can see the results of my tests here. I found that the model's performance is very stable. It consistently achieves our goal of creating more natural characters with finer skin texture. Of course, this is for generating images from scratch. Image retouching is a different method. Look, this is an original image. I use a VAE to encode it into the latent space. Then I feed the encoded image directly into our sampler's latent image input. The empty latent input is no longer needed. For the prompt, you can just write something simple. I wrote best quality. No other changes are needed. For the sampler, I suggest changing the scheduler to DDM underscore uniform or simple, as they tend to work better than the standard normal. Again, I'm using 50 sampling steps. But note, since this is a redrawing method, I set the denoising strength not to 1, but to 0 0.25. I personally find 0 0.25 to be sufficient. After sampling, this is the result. When we zoom in, again, noise appears, and it's not very clear. The main reason for the lack of clarity is the resolution. So, we increase the resolution, again using a Seed VR2 node. You'll see the details become incredibly clear and beautiful. So, no matter what kind of image you have, you can process it this way without any issues. This includes the Quen image picture I showed earlier. The original had no details, especially the facial texture, which was non-existent. After upscaling, the result is extraordinary. We can zoom in here. You can even see something inside her mouth. I'm not sure what it is. Therefore, I believe this workflow is incredibly valuable for many image processing tasks. What are you waiting for? Go try it yourself. Follow me and become an AI expert.